Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow. Jerry, we've taken some time off, and in, in between that time, I got sick. I think yeah. I'm getting better. Yeah. Well, Happy New Year's. Happy New Year, 2018. Boy, boy is the hockey going to be thick and heavy now, huh? Yeah. So, Minnesota Wild are healthy. Uh, they got everyone on board. Pretty easy. I saw him back. Yeah. He looked pretty good the two games I seen him. He's got some. Uh, he's got some legs on yeah. him, and uh, same old Parisi. Zach is almost on, looks that way. Yeah, he's going right to the net. He doesn't care about yeah. his body. <laughs> you know, let's talk about the Wild. The Wild had two big wins. Uh, scored a lot of goals. Uh, they beat uh, Florida. Yeah. And uh, what was the other game in there? I, I only had a summer schedule. They had, They got at. Buffalo. Then that what game was out of hand right away. Right. They had a six nothing lead and held on for a six to two to win. Right. But, uh, you know, as much as I love Miko Koivu, he's been the captain of this team for, it seems like, ever. But he really takes bad penalties. I don't know if it's just... I think there's a few players that once in a while do that. Niederreiter does it. That Zucker did it a few times. And but but Koivu seems to do it. Hmm. I don't know. I just, I don't look at the captain as the guy that should be taken... Bad penalties. Right. He seems to take a lot of bad penalties. He's I wish the... Koivu could be more of a goal scorer than he is a bad penalty guy. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I, I'm critical of him. I, I understand that. But, uh, boy, I'll tell you, I'd like to see him just be on top of his game just one season. Just be, you know, the, the ultimate player. And Maybe I'm being harsh. And... Well, the thing I'm, that bothers me about the Wild – so far, and especially lately, they seem they can't win on the road much. Their record's terrible, but they're playing real good at home. Yeah. And you got to win at home, no matter what. But you got to be above 500 or 60% on the road, too, if you want to be one of the better teams that go into the playoffs. Now they're going to half the season's over, and we're going to be going – through that second half now, fighting for the playoffs. Yeah. And we should have a jump on it this year. We're way behind from last year even on points. Well, what's Koivu at? Like six goals on the season? Uh, I, I did this a week ago, and Koivu was five. At that time, it was five goals I, I, and 13 yeah. assists. I think he's got six goals. I mean. Zucker and Stahl are the, and Niederreiter and Granlin are the four guys scoring goals. I'm not suggesting he shouldn't be the captain, but shouldn't your captain have some more than just – what's leadership? If you're not scoring goals – Yeah, he's getting, up, he's getting up there in age, you know, so I think they, his role is a little different. But he's never been anyone. a goal scorer. Right, that's true too. And he's out on every power play. You know, and it just it, – See, it, that, that's one thing that bothers me. Sometimes I think he shouldn't be on that power play at all. Yeah. He shouldn't be on the ice. For that there's better players that can do more right now I think. i've always liked this play i've always liked this yeah. style i've always liked this grit uh but but i i just i want to see more on it miko koivu and we're not and uh you know i don't know that we can expect more now at this stage of his career but uh boy it'd be nice to see him be more productive right we'll see second half of the season see what, what kind of team this really is I mean, they got a, not many new players. They're but, healthy. Yeah, that's one thing. They got to be healthy. And I thought uh, Stalock did a decent job for being a backup goalie coming in there for Dubnik for a while. And, right. You know, you don't expect the, everything from him, but he did what he's supposed to. He's yeah. a, he was a lo- maybe alone two, three goals a game, right. you know, average-wise, which is not bad. So, I mean, now they got Dubnik back too, so... And Parisi, like, uh, he just came back, and Nita Ryder's back. And first game back, Nita Ryder gets a hat trick. And Well, let's talk about that. He had been out with an injury. Uh, was it a specific injury? or they ne- You know, they never say. Lower body. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it was an ankle or a knee or something. Lower body, <laughs> below earth. Yeah. <laughs> below the belt. But he comes back a minute into the game. His first game back, he scores a goal. Goes right. on to score a hat trick. He could have scored a couple more that first period even. He had great chances. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just one of those games, I guess. You're at the right spot at the right time. <laughs> yeah. So the Wild uh, looked good in those two wins uh, uh, over uh, Buffalo. And then uh, 
Florida. Right. And then they went to Colorado and played a, uh, a game on Saturday. And they never, in that first period, Colorado looked like a Stanley Cup caliber team. Right. You know, you look at their record, and they're even with the Wild pretty much as far as their records go. But uh, the Wild tightened things up, but uh, they just were never able to recover and lost that game, what, 7-2? to two? Yeah, I think it was 7-2. Yep, it was. Got it right there. <laughs> so the Wild play again? Uh, Tomorrow night. All right. Well, we're filming, but... Um, and then on this uh, weekend, I know they got... Uh, well, they play tomorrow night, and I think they go to Chicago on Wednesday. Then they come back and have Winnipeg on um, Saturday, and uh, is it Vancouver on Sunday? Okay. And they change the time on the Vancouver game from 6 to 7 o'clock because the Minnesota Vikings, whoever they are, are playing. Did they change that to accommodate yes. the football? Yes, they just did it last, uh, last game. They now, I that. noticed that Case Keenum was at the game, quarterback for the Vikings. Right. Did he do the let's make hockey call? No, he didn't. That's too bad. He, he was just there, and everyone, you know, gave him a standing ovation. And that, yeah. you know. So it was nice. wonder why they weren't able to work that out. I don't know. Maybe they had kids already, you know, set up. And no, that. no. There's no kids. You can, the kids can do it the following weekend. They had kids no. do it. Yeah, you know, you have... The quarterback do it if he's there. That's too bad they didn't get that done. Right. So, um, well, the Wild, we'll see. Second half of the season now, and, uh, you know, that's tough. You know, they got some good teams in this uh, Western division. Anaheim's playing a lot better, and, you know, Nashville, St. Louis, are, and Winnipeg are top top teams this year. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> you know, I don't know, but uh, this, this Avalanche team, could uh, surprise you too. Yeah. And Dallas is playing better. Yeah. You know, they'll be in there with the Wild fighting for that playoff spot. So these games with each other mean a lot more, than, I think. This now, what is the status with Dominic Toninano, a uh, former Duluth East player? Yeah, uh, he's dropped down. I, I think they think that he'll get more playing time this way. That's just the way you develop these young kids. You sure. Know? You don't want them sitting them on the bench most of the time playing that fourth line, third, mm -hmm. maybe once in a while a third line if someone gets injured or something, you know. So sending them down is probably the right thing to do and more playing time, but he got, you know, it's good for him that he came up and played a cup, knows what it's like. Yeah. So and then, uh, they really like him, I'm hearing. So I'm hearing a lot of uh, former UMD players in, in the news. Uh, Kyle Osterberg uh, had a hat trick in his... No, where is he playing? I um, haven't been following him. Like the goals. Uh, okay. Was it, is it San Diego, maybe? Okay. Or is that where uh, Walensky is? That's where Walensky yeah. was, I okay. know, but I don't know. He could be out there. I think Walensky, he could be did, he, did he make the all-star team? What's that? Walensky? I don't know. Okay. Because he, he was brought up to Anaheim. Oh, he was? You didn't know that? I didn't. Yeah, he was brought up to Anaheim, and he okay. was doing good, and he got a couple of assists. I gotta check and see if he's still on the. Oh, all right. On the, yeah, okay. they liked him. Came in back up for to take over from an injury, and yeah. right away he got an assist, two assists, his first three games. Hmm. So, hmm. UMD Bulldogs, uh, they uh, they've had some time off over the holiday here, uh, Christmas and New Year's. Uh, they'll resume at Colorado College uh, this weekend. Yeah. We won't see the Bulldogs at Amsoil. Until that series with St. Cloud, January 26, 27. No, we or, got I'm North sorry, Dakota. North Dakota, 19th and 20th. We got some big games. Now, right now, UMD, I just saw that. Now, they were out on the East Coast. They won the championship. They came home with some hardware in this Ledyard Classic, Yale and Dartmouth. Right. Um, nice they beat to, Yale, and, and they, went out, yeah. they went out there with a depleted lineup. Yeah. All those guys were at the jun at the juniors. Yeah, World Juniors. Of five of our best players were missing. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it is to me. They went out there and <laughs> won this trophy, yeah. won this uh, tournament. But now they go to Colorado College, and Colorado College is a lot better team. They're um, they got them at nineteenth in the in the polls in the pairwise right Jeez. now. Jeez. Tied and then UMD they got at 14th tied, so I mean these are big games. But you got the two two of the best teams in the nation, um, St. Cloud and North Dakota, coming into the Amsoil in uh, two weeks and three weeks from now, and those are games they got to win. 
if they want to, you know, if they want to get to the playoffs. Otherwise, they're going to go on the road for the start of the playoffs, and then they got to win the frozen face-off to even get to the regions. Hmm. Yeah. So they got to play good against the good teams right away. <laughs> well, they've got eight series left. If they split them, that's eight wins. Uh, yeah. Boy, I don't know. And like you said, at Colorado, uh, they'll host North Dakota here January 19th and 20th, and then they go to Minnesota State, and then they host St. Cloud State, and then they go to Denver. So it's a tough schedule. Right. So, hey. Yeah. Uh, St. Cloud on the USCHO rankings uh, just dropped down to two because they lost to Minnesota yesterday, but they beat them on Saturday night. So that was... St. Cloud is a very good team. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, I think we still play Denver again. Yeah, we'll play Denver at Denver. So uh, February, I mean, first weekend of February. It doesn't get easy, I'm telling you. Right. We got, we got three teams in the top six, seven, I mean, that we're playing. Uh, we'll host Miami uh, the second weekend of uh, February. It looks like the third weekend of February. And they're ranked 16th in the pair West. Yeah, and then we'll go to Western <laughs> Michigan in February. Oh, Western's way up. <laughs> Are they? Yeah, they're... They're nine. The wild, the wild, the uh, Bulldogs will uh, end their season, regular season, at home against Omaha. Omaha. Yeah, and Omaha is fighting the same position as uh, their number thirteen, but they're fighting just like they got to win yeah. these games too. Well, it's just amazing how yeah. tough this that league is. And CHC, yeah, it's just amazing. And the the frozen face off, like I, we said a few weeks ago, and moved back over to the XL Center now where the old WCHA Final Five always was. And so that's good. I like that. Minneapolis, I mean, they tried. I mean, Well, but, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's talk high school hockey, Jerry. Oh Things are boy. really heating up. Oh. Now, you haven't uh, got Duluth East at number one because? I, I thought I'm looking at the whole season, not one game. A lot of people look at one game when they went down to this weekend and they played Stillwater, which is a very good team, young. They're, I think they're a year off from being a very good team, top 10 team again. And they played very good against Stillwater and beat them 4-1. But then uh, right after that, they had to wake up in the morning and go over to Tonka and play them in the afternoon at Tonka's rink, Pago Arena. And uh, I tell you what, it was jammed in there, around the rails. Every scout, it's one of these games, every scout was there from every pro team. They were looking at these players, and I tell you what, they, every, the fans got their money's worth. Tonka comes out and scores in the first minute and a half. When really? He, yeah, East defenseman made a mistake, and the, the defense man was coming in all alone on the left side, and they passed over to him, and it was a pretty easy goal. But then that player that's really playing good for Duluth East Three minutes later, Garrett Worth scored on a power play, on a rebound, and tied it up. So it went 1-1 into the second period. Second period, East came out and just used their body and banged Tonka all over the ice. Mm. And Worth scored another goal, plus a Jopi, a number eight. So kind of funny, the first... Um, Five goals were by number five and number eight on both teams. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But then uh, then uh, in the third period, Tonka comes out and they start ta they're coming around, you know, and holy cow. And then they scored a goal, 3-2. But then East got back to its regular, like, hitting and that, and they got an empty net goal and it ended 4-2. So the... Greyhounds went down, beat Stillwater, beat Minnetonka, but you just weren't able to get them uh, in that number one spot. Why? No, because Tonka, they're all, they only have one loss, and that was to East. Okay? East tied Blaine. Blaine's not in the top ten. East tied Cloquet. Cloquet's not in the top ten. And who's the other team they tied? But they tied three teams that are not in the top ten. And... I can tell you right now. Well, the uh, Blaine or Lakeville North, or but uh, they tied teams that Marshall. they should win. 
they they got to take advantage of those teams. Whatever happened but in the East, I think can get to number one. So I put Edina back. Their only loss. It's kind of a circle, you know. Yeah. One team beats this team. The other team beats that team. Yeah. You know. So what do you? So here's the way it is. There's four teams out there in Class AA that are so close to each other. You can throw any one of them as number one. East, St. Thomas Academy. Edina and Minnetonka. All right. Any one of those. And I'm okay with it. What um, happened in this uh, East Centennial game going back to December? Oh, that was a tough game. Uh, I think one of the better players in the state, uh, I mean, he had a great game against East uh, Lucas McGregor. And uh, I think he scored, a, yeah, he scored a hat trick that game. And uh, East won in overtime. They won it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. It was a great game and a good crowd at... Uh, Heritage. Heritage Center, yeah. Nice. Uh, you'll get a chance to see East and Denfeld. Um, That's tonight. Oh, geez, tonight. Well, we're taping uh, Monday the 8th, so tonight, uh, big game at Heritage. Yeah. Then they go up um, and play Grand Rapids, and I don't I don't know what to expect in a game like that, but score-wise, I think East will dominate. How much do, do they want to dominate? Do you hold off, or what do you do? But so East will play at Grand Rapids on Thursday the 11th. Then they go down to the cities for Eden Prairie, yep. uh, January Saturday the 13th of January. Next chance to see East here in Duluth will be Friday the 19th against Brainerd at the Heritage. That's a five o'clock start. It is. I'm sorry, that's the JV. Seven o'clock yeah. for the varsity. But then they got Rosal the next day. And right now, it shows here at a noon start. So they got two. Oh, yeah. Huh. So you get to see a northern team, two northern teams. Brainerd. Brainerd's a nice team. They got four brothers on that team, triplets and another one. Last year, they had five of the brothers. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, and uh, uh, Dave Oss is the coach up there. He went up there three years ago, and he used to be the Blaine coach. Yeah. So he's loving it up there, and he's doing a great job. And so Brainerd is a team to watch out for from now on. Wait, you haven't heard much about Brainerd in high school hockey? No. I don't think they've ever made it to the state high school tournament. Interesting. In double A. Yeah. They might have been an A team one time. Maybe not know. in your lifetime, but yeah. maybe in, in the lifetime previous to yours. Yeah. In the dinosaur days. Yeah, yeah. Right before I was born. Well, that's something to look into, <laughs> uh, whether or not Brainerd's been to the state tournament. And uh, right. let's hope that if they make it, that uh, it's not at the cost of uh, a Duluth team. But we got a lot of more games um, at the Heritage, too, this year. We got Prior Lake with East and Bloomington Jefferson, Anoka. And who else do we have? Elk River. Well, that's a big game. That's going to be in Cloquet. We got Cloquet back here too on February 5th. So, got Elk River on the Saturday before that and Cloquet. So, two big section games. And they'll, I think they'll bring big crowds here. Well, we've been hearing a lot about East from the start of the season that this might be one of the better teams that they've had. And, you know, what names jump out? Because you look back over the years and there's just been some phenomenal players. Right. Uh, whether or not that translates into good East teams. To some degree, it does. But what, I, do you, what are you seeing here, Jerry? I say the, the best thing about this team, that they're very close-knit. They've been together. A lot of these kids started in the ninth grade together on this team. Now there's eight of them that are seniors. And the thing is they're deep. They can play. Like against Minnetonka, they were throwing four lines out all the time. And that's when you can do that. Remember in high school back in our time, Usually, most of the public schools had one good line, and they'll throw a second line out a little bit, <laughs> and then throw that first line back out. But there was only 12-minute periods. Now there's 17-minute periods, and uh, more lines you can throw out there. Sometimes it's bad. They, East, Mike Randolph, Coach Randolph, was throwing their fourth line against the first line at Tonka. Wow. Yeah, and they know their role. Their role wasn't to score at all. Their role was defense, you know. And yeah. Beat, get get the body on these players all the time, and they and they uh, did it. They were effective. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. It's a well coached day game by Coach Randolph. Well, what else do, do we have in high school hockey? Yet? Well, Hermantown, uh, I mean, is playing good hockey. I mean, their losses are to Double A teams, 
You know, so they're, a lot of people thought they'll be way down. They're not that bad of a team. They beat Marshall twice now this year. Okay. In the finals in the Hilltopper Classic, they met. And uh, it was a great game. And, uh, I mean, uh, Marshall's, uh, what were they, they had four, four to two? I think it was four to two. And then Hermiton comes back and beats them five to four. Oh. Three goals in the last uh like five, six minutes of the game. My goodness. Yeah. So, but uh, just uh, let's give some rankings out here. To, uh, what I have, I have Edina number one in the class AA, Duluth East number two, Minnetonka number three, St. Thomas Academy number four. And I tell you, these four teams, they're so close, you can't, it's hard to separate any of them. Number five, Holy Family Catholic. Number six, Creighton Durham Hall. So we got some private schools there. White Bear was playing real good until they went over to Edina, played the number one Edina, and they took them to overtime and lost. Oh, okay. But then they played a very easy team and lost Saturday. Ooh. See how they get up for these big games. You yeah. Know? It's like a Cloquet East game. You almost throw away the records, you know, with the because – the rivalry, sure. And so, our, like, like East going down that game meant that was like almost like a state tournament championship game because the kids went out and threw each other on each other. And I mean, they don't mm. do that in a regular game usually. Yeah, yeah. And so then Elk River, I, I got them at eight, and I, I this team has uh, been playing pretty solid, and I think that'll be at the end of the year should be the number two seed if they keep doing that. Mm. And then Moorhead is kind of surprised. They got the same team from last year, but they're they're inconsistent. They're playing a very good game, and then they play a bad game. But uh, they got the same team, and that team got second place against Grand Rapids last year in the state championship. And then number 10, we got Centennial. And then we got a lot of teams that are – Fighting to get into those top ten, and I'll name them real fast: Andover, Blaine, Blake, who just moved. Blake just moved up to Double A this year. Brainerd, Chaska, Chaska is another one out in the west side of the cities there, but they have four kids that are D one commits already. Wow! Yeah, and they're all underclassmen, so oh. that's a team to watch out for. Cloquet, Duluth Marshall. I think Duluth Marshall, if they have a good week. And they play, who do they play this weekend? That's good. I forget now, but if they have a good week, it's possible that they can move into the top 10. Oh, they got mm. Cloquet tomorrow night. Then they got Egan, Eastview, Eden Prairie, Hill Murray. Hill Murray is a surprise team. I didn't think they'd be this good this early, but they're playing pretty good hockey now. But they're well coached. Lakeville South, Maple Grove, Prior Lake. All these teams, East Plays, Stillwater, Wazetta. I mean, most of um, so all of these teams, East Plays this year. Hmm. <laughs> so that just goes to show you how Duluth East uh, schedule what makes that. I think that's one of the best things for high school hockey is have a lot of good competitive games, and that by the end of the year, your team's going to be a lot better. Sure. Than playing these easy games, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But um, over on the A side, I put Montamina one, Hermantown two, St. Cloud Cathedral three, Orono four, Mounds West Tonka five, Sartell St. Stephen six, East Grand Forks seven, Greenway eight, nine Minneapolis, ten Delano. And then teams to watch Alexandra, your team, Laverne. All right. Yep. Monticello, New Prague. Virginia, uh, Providence Academy, South St. Paul, War Road, let's see, North France, and Simley. So that's the rankings for this week. And there's a lot of big games coming up in the next two, three weeks. So I, I see a lot of changes on these rankings. And now they're talking about Mr. Hockey. Okay. And uh, uh, the Pro Scouts put their vote in for the players they think should be the top 10 finalists. And I'm just going to go over some of mine so far, seeing all these games. I've seen like Edina five, six times. East uh, probably about 
close to 10 times. <laughs> I mean, a lot of these teams, four or five times, like Centennial, EP, Elk River, a lot of those teams. So I see a lot of these players. But uh, my leader for Mr. Hockey is Sam Walker, Edina. The kid's going to Minnesota, and he's the real deal, and I think he'll win it. But mm. then um, some real close competition will be the left winger up in uh, – Moorhead, Carter Rancliffe, and then um, the Centennial kid, Lucas uh, McGregor. I like those two. And then some other players I think that might get into that top 10 is Ben Almquist from Holy Family. He has 21 goals. Yeah. And here's our three players that I didn't, at first I didn't have them in my top 10, but the way they're playing, I got to put them there. Garrett Worth, Duluth East, 17 mm. goals. George Granis, Duluth Marshall, 23 goals. And a kid from uh, Virginia on the A-team, Jake Seitz. And these are all forwards. So there's not too much in the senior class for defensemen, but I, I'm going to throw a couple in there. Brady Zimmer from Holy Family and Luke Lamaster from Duluth East. So those are some names to keep watch on, see what the Pro Scouts put in there for the top 10. You know what? I just thought of something. Maybe, I don't know if this is something you want to do or not, but uh, I, we should do a, a weekly Mr. Duluth hockey player. Just somebody that stands out, somebody that... Uh, okay, we can do that. You know, and, yeah. you know, look at the, you know, whether it's, I don't know if you want to do it by class, you yeah. know, and include Hermantown and Cloquet in this. And uh, a weekly uh, Mr. Duluth hockey player. Yeah. That sounds good. Um, but out, out of the class uh, of, of Duluth players right now, if you had to throw somebody into that hat of Mr. Hockey, you're saying... Uh, Granis and Worth okay. would be the two best yeah. players out of Duluth. Any chance that they... Do they have a, a shot at, at this Mr. I, Hockey? I'd say at this time because uh, Worth... The first half, first part of the season, he wasn't on, but lately, the last six, seven games, he's been two goals a game. Like you know, nice. he's just been amazing. And Granis, he started out real fast, and he had a great game against Duluth East. Mm -hmm. But most of his goals were against weaker teams too. So how do you? Yeah. So that that probably hurt him. So I'd say they can get in the top ten, but winning it, I don't think so. Well, yeah. but I think it'll be Sam Walker, the kid from Moorhead, or the kid from uh, Centennial. Well, we've just got a couple of minutes left here. Uh, we, we should talk about the empty netters, the four empty netters from the Wilderness. Yeah, the Wilderness played, was it the Cooley region? Yeah, they lost both games, but this is the weirdest thing in the world. Yeah. You told me that yesterday. and Yeah, the uh, Wilderness gave up four empty net goals in, in the one particular game. I've never seen a game. hockey game in my life. I you know, after <laughs> after two, you know, you put your goalie back in. Certainly after three, I don't know if they had him out. You know, maybe a fifth one could have come. He along, got but. they got an empty net, and then the wild the wilderness scored two. Then they took their goalie out again. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. But they'd taken their goalie oh. out seven minutes before the end of the game. <laughs> yeah, no, that's Patrick Roy waited until three minutes, not yeah. seven. <laughs> no, no, that's too early. Uh, we've had some time off because of the holiday. Uh, I'm getting over my illness, but it's good to be back. We want to thank the staff at PAC TV where this program is produced. Look for us online. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, we're on Facebook. Find us there and like us. And uh, MinnesotaHockeyConnection.com. And, um, Jer, we'll be back here next week uh, to drop the puck. Yeah, we'll be a lot of hockey this week. So we'll see you at the rink. Have fun. We'll see you then. <laughs>